Hi guys, hope you're all well. I certainly am. I finally submitted my second year animation, which will be on here in the next couple of weeks, so keep an eye out for that. But now means it's summer for me. So yay, I can relax and do more stuff myself. But actually today I'm doing a video that I've been wanting to do for a while, which is comparing and testing Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Fresco for your iPad. Which have their ups and downs, I've been around for about 6 months, which have got several updates since then. But before we dive into this review, please give this video a like and comment as the YouTube algorithm really likes that and pushes my content out to more of you guys. If you're not already, hit that subscribe button below and hit the bell icon so you don't miss my upload a video. With that out of the way, let's get into this review. So I'm first going to go over Adobe Photoshop, and first let me say both the illustrations I create today are not my best, they are just creations for testing the tools of the software. So Photoshop on the iPad when you first open it looks and feels like the desktop equivalent, and when you go into the program itself it feels like a condensed version of the full app. However this is where the problems start, and the biggest problem for me is that you can't rotate the canvas. which. To me is such a strange feature not to include. I was quite annoying having to rotate my iPad every time I wanted to do a different rotation. Besides that, the drawing experience can only be described as okay. As you saw, the brush selection wasn't the best. I am not sure how you can import more brushes. But with the brushes you do get, you are able to create an illustration, just not much selection. And these brushes can't be altered much like they can in the desktop app. But if you're using Photoshop for photo manipulation, desktop publishing or graphic design, then this is where it shines. These are the features that they did condense and kept. Are they better than the desktop version? Of course not, but I can see use cases where you may need to make adjustments on the go while transporting. And the ability to sync with Creative Cloud means you can edit the document straight from the cloud, which then means you, when you go to your computer and reopen the document, all the changes are already there. So if you're wanting a drawing program replacement, then yes, technically you can use this version of Photoshop, but wouldn't recommend it. However, for photos, graphics, etc, then yes, this is a very good application. Adobe Fresco is the other app I've used, and the first thing I've got to say is the pricing. If you already pay for the Adobe package, you get the app included, but if you don't, the app is advertised as free, but actually it's free for so many months, which then it has limited use for being free. So just be cautious of that, because I know that is a bit of a shady area that people don't like. Fresco's selling point is for unique live brushes, which act like physical mediums. Pre-installed are watercolour and oil live brushes, which are fun to use, but more of a gimmick than a tool. I find them quite difficult to control, and if they want this to be the selling point, I think there should be more options for brushes. Another thing I couldn't get working was the new mask layers, which are supposed to act like clipping and alpha masks, but I don't know why I couldn't get it to work, which was such a shame. One thing that surprised me that was that I had vector and pixel brushes. So if you don't know what a vector brush is, instead of drawing using pixels, the software uses math algorithms to draw out the stroke, which means it can be moved, scaled and resized without losing quality. For comic artists, that means adjusting and changing panels so easily, and to go with these vector brushes are a vast variety of regular brushes. Some of my favourite regular brushes are the comic set, which have half tones and pan tones, textured inking and much more. Unlike Photoshop, you can't do anything else really, like photo editing, manipulating and graphics. But is this a bad thing? No, I think it was actually smart of Adobe to basically split the Photoshop desktop app into two apps. 
It means we can focus on the standalone features and optimize this for drawing and Photoshop for everything else. Now, how does this compare to Procreate, the holy grail of drawing programs? Live well, mixed feelings. Procreate is a great software and that will never change. But I do like Adobe has developed separate apps to focus on drawing and another to focus on graphics and manipulation. And they do that well. And paired together, I can see them being an unstoppable combo. I keep going back to comic artists, I think this is perfect for them. You can create a layout of a page with the text and changing aspects such as colour and readjustment in Photoshop, but the actual designs are created in Fresco using the amazing brushes and exporters P PSDs, importing them back into the Photoshop document, which then, as well, can be viewed on multiple devices or on the computer to then be printed on. Now going back to Procreate, yes, you can do all of this and more actually with animation, but for certain creatives, this is not specialised enough. I think that's Adobe selling point. It's not just for the average, average hobbyist, it's more for professional specialised work. I haven't really spoken about the illustrations that I created today, and if you don't know what they are, there are actually two Pokemon called Piplup in the first illustration from Photoshop, and Squirtle from Fresco. God, I forgot his name then. Why did I decide to do this? I just don't know. I was in the mood for drawing Pokemon today, but I think I've just been playing a lot of Pokemon on my Switch, and it was just something fun and easy to draw. And as I did say at the start of the video, these are not my best work because it was more testing the tools. And you can see with the um, Piplup in Photoshop, you can see how much I really struggled when trying to ink this, as it's not the best for drawing, as I said, for inking. And one thing you might notice as well, the shading on Piplup is a bit strange. Well, the shading on both of them are a bit strange. In Photoshop, I tried to use a texture brush to create a more rough, organic feeling, as I know that's Adobe Fresco selling point. So I wanted to create something that's quite comparable instead of just doing flat line art, flat colours, flat shading. I don't know if that worked out well because it looks kind of messy and grungy almost. I'll let you guys be the deciding point of that. Whereas with Fresco, that was a lot more fun to colour in a shade. But I did mention there's no clipping master, it didn't make it quite annoying as I couldn't just lock in certain areas and colour them had to shade over colour and then erase so that it didn't go onto new layers. Speaking of which as well, in Fresco, if you didn't want things to bleed together, it is good that they did include a feature that can dry the page out almost. Just like when you use watercolours, you wait for it to dry before you put a new layer on. And this is very useful if you don't want to draw on a new layer and want to keep it all on one layer. I didn't do this because I had enough I wasn't using enough layers to have to do that, but funnily enough though, if you're using this on the 2018 iPad, which is I have, um, the regular budget model, you might come to some problems with storage. The storage of the Adobe Fresco file was so much bigger than my Photoshop file, I don't know why. It might be because I was also screen recording at the same time on my iPad, but I don't know, but it did come up with an error quite close to the end, quite a few times saying there wasn't enough storage to save it. But that is also another good thing though. The software, unlike the counterparts on the desktop, have also saving built into it, like in Procreate. So if you accidentally close the application and come out of it, it'll still be there. Plus, one thing I only found out afterwards is that they have a recently deleted folder as well. So if you accidentally delete something, you can actually get it back which is something I wish Procreate had. 
So many times I've accidentally deleted something pro grade, which then I can never get back again. It's so frustrating. So if that's something you look for as well, then it might be worth considering switching to the Adobe applications. However, the downside to all Adobe Pro, Pro the downside to all Adobe products compared to like Procreate or any like DaVinci stuff like that is that it is a monthly subscription. And that is the biggest downfall of everything. Procreate is great for anyone because it's a one-time payment. If you never go use it again, you just never use it again. If you like it, then you've got that payment for life. Whereas Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Fresco, all the Adobe products as well, unlike your counterpart PCs and Macs, they are so much more expensive in the long run because you have to pay monthly for them. So it's up to you whether you decide this is great for you or not. Personally for me, I don't think I'll be switching to Adobe Photoshop and Fresco as my main drawing tools. I might experiment more with Fresco just because of the brush selection and then use Photoshop on my Mac or my PC. But that is for another day, another time to discuss. Okay guys, I'm going back to my script now as I've only got a little bit more to say. So this is the end of the review, I haven't got much more to say about each program, besides both apps are great and they have their pros and cons. But if you pay for the Adobe package, I would say take advantage of both of these apps, especially Fresco, because it's such fun to use and you can create amazing artwork. And like I said with Photoshop, if you have the package, you might as well try it because it won't harm you just to try it, you might find out it actually works well worked really well into your workflow. I hope you all enjoy this video. I promise I'm going to go back to my regular speed paints or using traditional mediums because I really miss using them, especially now that my degree is done for this year. I just want to do more traditional stuff with watercolours, coloured pencils, acrylics, that type of stuff, so expect more of that content to be coming onto this channel soon. So, until then guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below which app you prefer to use, as the algorithm really likes it by engage with you guys and you engage back and pushes my content out to more of you guys out in the world. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss when I upload a video. Until next time guys, keep on being creative.